What's going on guys, Assalamu alaikum, Nelson here, a Linode Developer Advocate. In this video, we're going to carry on our Docker series. In the previous video, I've explained the Docker architecture. And if you've missed that video, you can click somewhere here or here to go back and recap. In this video though, we're going to learn exactly how to work with containers. So how to manage containers. We're going to SSH into our Linode. So this is a, um, a server which is running somewhere in the cloud using Linode. And currently it's running a container, which you saw was super easy uh, to get up and running with Docker. So we're gonna focus on understanding the commands that you use when it comes to manage your Docker containers. And also, uh, I'm gonna teach you about Docker volumes, which is a way for you to uh, share data between host and containers and also between containers. So if you're new to this channel, go ahead and subscribe. And finally, if you wanna follow along through this series, go ahead and sign up with $100 uh, coupon code, which you can find the link under the description of this video. Without further ado, let's kick off this video. So in the previous video, we managed to get this application, which is running on Docker, hosted on this Linode right here. We have a public IP address and in here, we've just accessed it through this IP address and we got this page right here. So this is actually an application which is running inside of a container. And remember, we run this command. So docker run dash D and then dash P 8080. And then this was the image right here. And then we got this sample application. So what I want to do with you is I want to jump into the actual Linode itself. And then I'm going to show you some Docker commands. And then later we'll also learn about volumes. So in here, you can see that they have the SSH access. So this is how you get into it. So basically you just copy this command right here. So I'm going to copy that. And then in here, I'm going to open up my terminal and I'm going to paste that command in here, just like that. So you see SSH root at and the IP address right here. And by the way, we're just doing this because I didn't want to generate the public and the private key, right? Because otherwise um, that's how you meant to SSH into servers and not using the root um, user. So here uh, for demo purposes, it's absolutely fine. So here I'm going to press enter. And remember before we generated a password. So I'm just going to add that password. There we go. And now I'm going to press enter. And by the way, if you are on Windows, uh, you can use PuTTY. So PuTTY, um, it's a way that you can also SSH into Linux service. So you have to install that. So here, I think I got the password incorrect. So let me try again. And there we go. So I, I was copying the, the incorrect password. And now we are inside of the box. So here I'm going to press Control L. And let's use the command Docker and then PS. So here, this will give us the list of all available containers which are running. So I'm going to press enter and check this out. So we have one container. We have the container ID in here. We've got the image, we've got the command. And then in here, any traffic that goes through port 80 is forward into port 80 inside of the container. So here, so let's just do this. So I'm going to type Docker and then stop. So I'm going to stop this guy. So I want you to see something. So I'm going to stop this. And now we've stopped the container. Now if I go back to my web browser and in here, if I reload the page, this shouldn't work. Just give it a second. And you can see that it's actually hanging, right? So it's not responding back. So in here, let's now say Docker PS. And you can see that we have no running containers, but I can say Docker PS dash and then a, and this will show all the containers. You can see that this is actually stopped, right? So here, so this one has been stopped. And if you want to start the container, 
type docker and then start and then the container id so this one here command c and then paste that just give a second and then docker ps so i'm just click I'm just going to clear the screen and you can see that now it's running again so status five seconds and now if i reload in here you can see that this returns immediately which is nice now what i want to teach you here is if i go back to the slides so in here so in this example here we actually have so the web browser and we are you know accessing local host in this case so if we are inside of the box we can just say uh, curl and then local and then host dash and then v enter and you can see that we get the page right so this is the exact same page so this is an html page so here we are accessing through the actual ip address right but basically you can see that we said anything that goes through port 80 is mapped to port 80 inside of a container so this second port refers to this port right here now what we could do is we could say right so in here we also want to map this port so 8080 on the host to 80 on the container and then we access using 8080 so let me show you how to do it so in here i'm just going to grab this command right here so the one that we just um, used to get the container up and running and in fact was this one here so they're, they're both the exact same thing so here let me just clear the screen and then i'm going to say docker and then here i'm going to say stop and then the container id there we go and then i'm going to say docker and then rm the container id just like that so now docker ps oops so docker ps nothing there so docker ps dash a the container is gone right now let's run this command so let me just copy again so copy that paste that and that was too quick so i didn't want to do that so let's just say docker ps and let me grab this container id docker rm dash f so instead of stopping and then removing we can just kill the container just like this press enter and there we go now in here let me just press the up arrow or yeah so this command right here and now what i want to say is so i'm going to say dash p so i want to expose another port and this will be 80 80 2 and then 80 inside of the container right so now i want to press enter there we go and docker ps and have a look so we have now a second port which was exposed so anything that goes through localhost 8080 is forward to 80 on the container. So if I go back to the web browser in here, so remember, so if I access this, so this is 80 right here, I can say port and then 8080, enter, and the application is accessible through a different port. Now, if I say 3000, for example, you can see that it's actually hanging, right? So there is nothing listening on port 3000. So if you want, you can also um, expose it through port 3000. So there we have it. Now you know how to work with containers, stopping, and then also exposing the ports. Now let me quickly teach you about volumes. So volumes is a way that you can basically, so in here, I've got uh, some slides in here for you. So the volumes basically is a way of you mapping any content or folders from the host to the container right because the container doesn't have access directly to the host if you want to share files config files folders etc you use volumes so in here basically it allows you to share data between containers and host and the data can be kept after container dies right so here in this example we have two containers right and uh, we have the host as well so if we want to share data between hosts or actually containers my bad we can use uh, volumes right so here you can see that we can basically share uh, files or folders but basically it's a way of you sharing data between containers 
and host right now the way we create volumes is as follows so basically we have the container and then we have the file system and we have the memory so here we can create volumes in two ways we can have the bind mount and basically this is where the host can share its own file system using dash v so the first argument is the host path and the second argument is the path inside of the container second we can create a volume directly and basically we're going to use docker volume create and then whatever name now the volume so this second way of creating volumes uh so here we have no control so this is actually managed by docker so inside of the file system there is a docker uh, section which is managed uh, by docker and we have no control of it and then finally we can uh, use the tempfs mount and this is mainly for temporary storage which is stored in your uh, memory so let me go quickly and show you how to use volumes so in here let me go and oops yeah so port 3000 is not accessible so port 8080 is accessible there we go so here what i want to do is the following i'm going to open a new tab and then in here i want to type docker and then nginx just like that and then here so docker hub so this is where we can find a list of a bunch of containers so here we're going to use the nginx container so this is the official image and they give you an example of how to basically run the container itself so you can see the command here so docker run name some nginx and then you can mount a volume some content and then this is basically um the path inside of the container right so what we're going to do is so let's just basically i'm going to take this command right here or actually let's just take this second command so exposing external port so here command c go back to my terminal and i'm going to paste this and here so port 8080 is already taken so let's expose port 3000 and now let's just run this command and you can see that enable to pull from daemon and basically so here um we need to say nginx so nginx and then this will pull the latest image and we'll talk about uh, images in a second but again here i always uh, misspell nginx so this is meant to be n so here n g n x <laughs> n so here n g n x just like that so i'm gonna press enter and this will actually pull the docker image you see that it's pulling and it's about 27 uh, megabytes and there we go so now if i click the screen type docker ps check this out so we have a second container nginx listening on port 3000 so in here if i basically um go back to this tab so this is the uh ip address so here i'm going to say 3000 there we go welcome to nginx now what i'm going to do is i'm going to search for bootstrap so boot and then strap and in here get started and let's just take this starter template so in here so hello world i'm going to copy this and in here i'm going to create a new folder so make there and then i'm going to say uh, code cd into code and then vi and then i'm going to say index.html there we go and then i'm going to paste all of that code and then escape wq and there we go so now i'm going to kill this container or in fact we can just run the exact same container port but on a different port so you can see so here 3001 and then here i want to say dash v for volume and then here parenthesis pwd so i want to basically uh, mount the volume so i want to mount the current directory to and in here if i go back to nginx 
so here so this official uh, page I'm gonna mount into this location right here and we can say read only so here I'm gonna take basically I mean, let me just take the whole thing so here command C and then paste that and then run and basically we can't really run it with the same name so let me just um, I can basically remove the name so this will give it a random name and you can see the command all in one line enter and there we go so now if I go back to my web browser and here port 3001 check this out hello world so this is a bootstrap application which is running inside of a container so so we've learned about volumes we've learned about containers how to manage containers stop deleting but the volumes itself so you saw how we created uh, how we shared a volume between the host to the container right here so the index of html lives inside of the file system and then we mount it inside of the nginx container you can also create the uh, volume using docker volume uh, which is less popular to be honest because it's managed by docker uh, and also the tempfs mount um, you know you probably will never use it um, but most likely you're going to be using the bind mount most of the times and then the volume which is really straightforward to use um, and yeah so this is all for this video if you enjoyed this video give a thumbs up and in the next video we're going to learn about images tags and versioning i'll catch you in the next one Salam alaikum.